and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am filming in the middle of the day and there's people on the road so it's gonna be a little loud. Apologies but um, I'm so happy to be doing this right now because I'm not tired. It's not the middle of the night. It's not early in the morning. Like I'm ready to go. I'm also really excited because I was going through my channel the other day and I realized that Number one, every time I do like a reading wrap up, I don't do monthly wrap ups because I sometimes will read like one book a month, so it's not enough for a monthly wrap up unless I wanted to talk about that one specific book. But um, I tend to read a whole lot, talk about what I was reading, and then for the next couple months read and then talk again about what I was reading. But accompanying those videos, I've also done videos where I talk about the TV shows and things that I've been watching. So I'm excited because I'm doing that again today. I like a lot of stuff. I like reading anime, movies. To some extent, I'm not like a, what are they called, cinephiles or something? I'm not that. So yeah, that's, that's the intro. So I'm just gonna talk about, I made a list. I'm probably not gonna talk about everything that I've been watching because it's a lot. But I'm so excited. Why am I so excited? I love talking about the things that I love to the void. I guess I'll talk about the things that I had watched. So I think that's what I did in my last video. So what was I watching? I was watching Outlander, which I had gotten a free trial from Stars um, to watch the new season, and I never got around to watching the final episode of that. So I'll just wait for it to come around on um, <clears throat> Netflix. I'm not trying to buy stars. I I don't have any money. <laughs> like I can't stress enough how broke I am. It's a really good show. It taught me a lot of, of things about that part of the world. I've always been aware, obviously, of British uh, imperialism. I'm aware, I've been aware of the history of between Scotland and like, uh, England, the British. I was taught a lot more by watching Outlander and like the clearances and the highlands and all that stuff. The Jacobite rebellion, like learned a whole lot of things. I also learned a lot more about Scottish culture or sp more specifically Highlander culture. They definitely get into heavy topics. In the beginning of the show, a very unpleasant um, like rape scene that I did not watch. I skipped through that. But for the rest of the show, it's pretty okay. There's always gonna be like gross things because Claire, the female protagonist, she's a doctor. There's nasty things like war, things like that. I like, I enjoy the show. Um, I like the vibes when there's no drama going on. I've talked about Bleach also in my last video. So I'm just gonna talk about the Thousand Year of Blood War anime specifically. As far as I'm aware and as our most uh, watchers and readers of Bleach. The Thousand Year Blood War is the final arc in the Bleach manga. There is a, a hell arc that people kept talking about and I was confused and so I looked it up and it's basically there's sort of like a hint that there might be a continuation with Ichigo and Orihime's son possibly. Um, but nothing's been, not a lot has been done. Uh, their son is getting into some stuff and yeah, there probably will be a continuation. But for now, uh, Thousand Year Blood War arc, that is the final arc. I'm trying to find a synopsis because I can't explain off the top of my head the Thousand Year Blood War, but it's essentially, um, so there's a whole lot of lore in re like regarding Bleach that I kind of just picked up by watching. It kind of seems like a sort of simple story, sort of, on the surface, um, but there's a lot to it. <laughs> I'm trying to find a general plot summary of this. Okay, 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 here we go. I found one on Quora. This person said, so the arc basically begins with Ichigo being approached by someone that looks like a Quincy. The Quincy's are in this world. So um, in this world, you have souls who are not human. They are souls like uh, Shinigami. They will come to the world of the living to uh, deal with hollows and stuff. And then you have Quincy's, which are humans, but they have spiritual power. Uh, Ichigo is a Quincy 
and a half a uh, half Quincy <laughs> half Shinigami he's also a uh, full bringer which is its own thing uh, but yeah so Quincy is super naturally aware humans um, super naturally aware humans humans with supernatural power the Quincy and the Shinigami they also clash often Quincy's they eradicate the hollows completely and the Shinigami disagree with how they go about dealing with hollows all right so i found a general plot summary of thousand year blood war arc so the arc uh, begins with ichigo being approached by someone that looks like a quincy but he has a small hollow mask on his face ichigo fights him but before beginning the fight he asks him why an Aaron guard like him wanted to fight him okay <laughs> and that character brings forth a quincy necklace and from the necklace he creates a weapon while also saying he is now Aaron Carr. He baits Ichigo into using his Bankai, and Ichigo does so like an idiot. <laughs> not an idiot. Um, this is what this person said, this is not me. The moment he does so, the Quincy slash Aaron Carr uses an amulet and uses this incantation and tries to do something to Ichigo's Bankai. But Ichigo can break the power and basically defeats him in one move. But the Quincy slash Aaron Carr escapes when his own shadow envelopes him and makes him disappear. We also see that Soul Society is invaded and Yamamoto Vice Captain Yamamoto's Vice Captain is killed. Those that kill him, they disappear through their shadows. We then see this big palace, apparently made up made of ice, but isn't ice, it simply has a very weird shape to it. And there we meet oh, I don't know how to pronounce this name. <laughs> I never know. Yahwak. We are just going to say this guy he's the king of all quincy's not just the king but also their creator so later we will we find out that bleach jesus when he was born he couldn't see hear feel but he was alive um, in time humans discovered that by simply touching the baby that their ailments would disappear what they didn't know is that when someone touched the child he would share with people a piece of his soul that piece would fix the ailment that the person suffered from but the person's lifespan would dramatically decrease, and when the person died, that piece of Bleach Jesus' soul would return to him, bringing with it a piece from the host soul. I'm gonna call him Bleach Jesus? Is that really what we're gonna call him? What does he look like? He kind of looks like he could be in, um, you know who he looks like? He looks like Lemmy from Motorhead, so we're gonna call him Lemmy a little bit with the mustache and the hair. Okay, but the person's life, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when that person died, the people who uh, touched Lemmy, uh, that piece of his soul would return to him, bringing with it a piece from the host's soul. As this happened, the child began to see, hear, wait, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> As this happened, the child began to see, hear, feel, all of his senses began, and all of his senses began working. When the child became a little more a little older he discovered he could also gather reishi particles and use the rare yoko <laughs> these are a lot of words okay this is not a simple it's not a simple i needed like a synopsis basically um you got lemmy and he's like terrorizing the shinigami well he and his uh people the Quincy's. It's, I think for me, when I first started watching season one, it was a little jarring because I was used to Bleach, like the original anime, it was more teen, like teen appropriate. And then this one was much more adult. There was more blood. It was very good. <laughs> it was a lot more graphic um, and just darker in tone in general. So like the Shinigami are getting their asses kicked right by the Quincy's in uh, the first I don't even know like the first season I don't know how many episodes um when I was watching the show I mean the animation that's what I've heard a lot about that was really good but it was also just really suspenseful I think because the original run of Bleach it had a lot of uh filler this one it's not there it's the story it's the full story without any additional things watching the first season with like i was gripped i know the ultimate outcome of this because i spoil things for myself but i was still watching like oh my god unohana her bankai i love it it's just creepy 
it's creepy and weird and i love it but yeah in general i just like the kind of difference in tone of this anime and how dark it feels i think that ichigo is a good character he's sort of a typical shonen protagonist but he is quite emotional and not in like a yelling and being loud kind of way but he's very kind of introspective a lot of people depend on him but he's really really strong um he dna whatever consists of a lot of different beings of this world which is so funny because i've written a story where i have a protagonist who is um in her world is a amalgamation a she's made up of a lot of different things i did not do that because of bleach i've been like i did that because i wanted to and every time i do something and i'm like i'm so clever this is so unique i know i see that it's somewhere else somebody already thought about it i did not experience the long long wait between the different series but i can imagine the people who watch the original run and then are watching this and i can only imagine how that feels anyway i've been talking for way too long now about this i just like bleach okay toradora <laughs> i loved it so much there is nothing like a, a high school anime romance it's just always so not always um a lot of the time it's very wholesome toradora it revolves around Ryu Ryu ryuji <laughs> Ryuji, um, despite his, he has a very sweet, he's very kind, he cooks and cleans, and he has a mother who's not super responsible, but she's a good person, but he's had to grow up really quickly to take care of things around the house and take care of his mom. So he's a good person, he's a good boy, but he looks, he has a look of someone who's not. He makes connections with this girl named Taiga and they both have crushes on each other's best friend so they agree they enter a pact and agree to help each other date the other's best friend and obviously they end up falling for each other how many episodes is it? i think it's like 25 episodes or something i really enjoyed watching it i really enjoy the high school uh anime romance romances i really loved the characters in this one though even the there's some things that are a little unexpected like there's a character introduced what's her name i forget oh ami i think how you pronounce it she's introduced and she's sort of like typical rich girl kind of mean but she evolves and has a lot of character development she develops a crush on ryuji uh it doesn't go anywhere obviously <laughs> um but she comes to accept that it won't go anywhere. I really appreciated her character development and I liked that she wasn't just like the bitchy high school girl. I, I, it's really wholesome. It's just really wholesome, really sweet. The ending, people were, I was kind of worried to watch this. Like I was worried to start this because I was seeing people complain about the ending. And so I was like, do they not end up together? Like, why are we complaining? and I was on Reddit and people were saying you need to watch past the credits and I watched past the credits it was fine so I love the whole entire anime really good characterization I love nuance I like when things are not surface level it's a frustration of mine kind of with books with movies I feel like people create these characters and they don't go deep enough because humans are multifaceted we're not just like the mean girl or the nice one or the artist like we there's depth to us even to most villains or bad people even though you know sometimes people are just truly evil and there's no nuance but a lot of people have nuance and so i really liked that about this because the mother she's uh you know irresponsible um kind of immature but she's still a good mom in her own way just needs a little bit of guidance i do like how also in the end uh, Ryuji and Taiga, they do end up together, obviously, like I said, but I like how in the end they sort of go their separate ways. They mature to then come back together. I loved it and I want to watch it again. Also, this made me, this reminded me <laughs> of um, Kimi ni Todoke. I watched the two seasons 
loved it fell in love with it and i bought the manga only like two so far i don't got i don't got that manga money you know what i mean but there was an announcement that the third season is gonna come out i'm so excited <laughs> I love that anime so much. It lit it pulled on my heartstrings. I don't know. So something about these high school anime romances. Um, anime high school. How do I word those? How do I put those words together? High school anime romance. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, I just love them, and I will eat them up most of the time. The majority of the time. Barakama. Barakama. How do I pronounce this? I can barely speak in English, so any other language is just going to prove a problem for me. So this one is a slice of life anime. I can explain this one fine. The main character, his name is uh, Honda, and he uh, is a young man, he's like 25, and during a showing for his art, uh, an old man is sort of like he's criticizing it and Honda he punches the old man and he I forget exactly like the order of events but essentially he ends up going to the countryside in Japan to sort of relax and kind of rediscover his talent he, you know, typical, it's like, imagine the Hallmark movies, like the Christmas movies where the girl is a big executive and she travels to, like, Vermont to help a tiny bed and breakfast in a small town that nobody ever goes to. It's like that. He makes friends with a lot of the people, but there's a little girl specifically that visits him a lot and they just have a nice friendship relationship there is the end song became i think it was on my top listening listenings <laughs> my top listenings this year no my top on um, my spotify wrapped that's that so also i totally forgot to mention watching bleach this year and getting into bleach one of the intros for the the hueco mundo arc that became one of my top songs second my second top listen song i love this song so much So uh, yeah, I get a lot of, I have a whole entire playlist now. Anytime I'm watching an anime and there's a song that I like, I add it and it's titled Because of Anime. But anyway, so Barakam, Barak, Barakaman, Barakam, Barakaman. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so it is, I really, as a 25 year old human, it's hard out here and I enjoyed watching this. It was sort of existential, um, not sort of, it was, and just kind of the pressure of, of being young and sort of, I think that the, the character is trying to find him himself and his, because his art, his calligraphy is kind of criticized for not being sort of different enough, unique enough to him. And you know, when you're in your, in life in general but when you're in your 20s there's a lot of I mean I've been this way since I was like in elementary school I have, I have problems but in your in my 20s especially I've been a, a there's a lot of existential dread not knowing what the future holds what I want to do in life um, and that kind of the anime touches on things like that and sort of just basically finding simple pleasure and joy in hectic 
our hectic lives I know especially in places like Japan well in really big cities um, a lot of younger people feel disillusioned Japan has a high suicide rate but so does the United States things are really too expensive you have to work a lot and really hard to just afford the bare minimum barely afford groceries drive on half a tank quarter tank and that's what I do. <laughs> Strongly recommend that. That one's really easy to watch and but it's not super dramatic. There's a lot of funny moments. Nice, good, fun, lighthearted. There is a um, whole entire manga obviously. The it doesn't the story doesn't end with the anime. There's also a prequel apparently uh, that I'm interested in like a prequel manga. So yeah anyway moving on. Castlevania. I loved it. I do think that it, I love the horror aspect, I love some of the themes that it touched on. Um, if you don't know, Castlevania, it was a video game, um, wait, let me just look it up so I'm not going off the top of my head and getting things wrong. It was a video game, it is a video game, and the video game from this, there have been comic books, um, a TV series. It is about Dracula. It introduces new lore to the character. He has a wife, a human wife, who is really, at least in the series, I don't know about like the Netflix series, I don't know about the other stuff, but in the Netflix series he has a wife who's really into science and this is like medieval Europe so naturally they think that she's a witch and they burn her at the stake and Dracula he vows to uh, kill everybody and make everybody's life horrible and terrible and I don't necessarily fault him for that. Obviously if I were one of the humans who was not a part of that I would be very upset. <laughs> not very upset. <laughs> I would be I would be pissed. They have a child who is a grown adult by the time Dracula starts his stuff, starts wreaking havoc on humanity and the son joins forces with um, Trevor Belmont and what's her name to take down Dracula. Dracula ends up dying, I forget what episode, but it happens pretty early on in the series and so he's not really ultimately the kind of big bad of the story. I thought it was really interesting. There is a lot of cussing. I think they toned that down in the second uh, series that's come out, Castlevania Nocturne, but there was a lot of cussing and I'm not a prude, like I said before, I'm not a prude, I swear often, but not that much. I feel like people add swearing to things to make it seem more adult, it's not necessary, um, but yeah, I still thought it was good. There is, it's a couple of episodes, it's not super long, and so it is kind of funny that <laughs> they cut like the three characters I think they're good characters and I do like them together in that first uh, series Castlevania the first series but they do spend literally majority of their time together in a library so I feel like there just wasn't like a lot to build like that relationship of the three of them together so when they're apart and then when they ultimately reunite, I'm kind of like, I don't know, I just, there could have been more time spent on the three of them, like building a relationship, like it would have been nice to see them like maybe travel, like if it were a longer series, um, like with more episodes, I think it would have been interesting to see them do like, but this is more of a personal thing, like a, not a monster of the week, like maybe a monster or two to see them forming that friendship. But other than that, I thought it was really good. I really liked the gothicness of it, how dark it was. I I took a gothic literature course. I've always loved dark, spooky, weird things, but I took a gothic literature course and I have a special love for gothic horror. It's because you can be you can get really dramatic with that genre. But yeah, it was a ton of fun to watch. I, it was a video game, so there are certain like powers and like weapons and things that feel very video game-y, but in a really good way. I, the action was top tier, and as per usual, 
Alucard. That's that's my baby. Okay, he's my he's my screensaver. Eh, there you go. I just love him. Moving on to Castlevania Nocturne, there was a lot of complaints about. There was a lot of things being said about this. I don't know anything about the original franchise. All I know is Castlevania Nocturne, what I saw on Netflix, and I liked it. I liked the like magic that I saw. Well, in general, in the first series, I liked them. Oh, I forgot to mention Siva. Her magic is just really cool, and I really like how she utilizes her magic in fights. But moving on to Castlevania Nocturne, there's more magic users. And it's interesting to see them fighting again really good action scenes really dark and bleak i like the um i mean vampires and media are always so often used to symbolize things because it's so easy to use this creature who uh drinks blood who can only survive off of blood like there's a lot you can do with vampires and in castlevania and nocturne it seems like the vampires are sort of they're like the aristocracy they're the ones in power i just like i like this like i like the whole franchise and the show and i like the characters i like the magic i like the action i like the animation i just i enjoyed it if i'm having a good time there if there's like minor if there's a little bit of flaws or whatever i can overlook it and i just i just really enjoyed it so um jjk jujitsu kaizen so jjk i should do a first impressions because my first impressions of all different kinds of anime have been so different to what the actual anime is about in jjk i thought first off i thought that itadori i thought that he was a grown adult i didn't realize that he was a high schooler like i was seeing clips from the show on tiktok and stuff like way back i assumed that he was an adult he is a child um and yeah the a lot of the characters are young people jujutsu kaisen i don't even really understand it so i have a hard time uh, I feel like I have a hard time explaining it, but I'm just gonna find a synopsis. The story follows high school student Yuji Itadori as he joins a secret organization of jujutsu, jujutsu sorcerers to eliminate a powerful curse named Ryomen Sukuna, of whom Yuji becomes the host. He eats uh, Sukuna's fingers and yeah, Sukuna is like a part of his body. <clears throat> they switch sometimes and Sukuna is very very bad <laughs> very very evil very very powerful I'm literally standing in a closet right now to record this but I looked up Sukuna on YouTube to try and get some clips to use in my video in a video that I saw in the thumbnail said Sukuna isn't evil or why Sukuna isn't evil and I was like really <laughs> he's not evil um so I looked it up and there is some conversations about how Sukuna isn't really evil, but instead more like a natural disaster. And you know, natural disasters just happen, they're not evil. I don't know how I feel about that as like a concept. I mean, I don't know, he seems pretty evil to me, but of course, you know, I, I, I don't even have evidence to necessarily back up. Well, I do have evidence. <laughs> Like the first time we're introduced to him, he says something about like, where are the women and children? He seems pretty evil to me. He uh, killed a girl for um, trying to like dictate to him. So I don't know, seems pretty evil to me, but I, for people who don't see him as evil, I would love to know the reasoning. Um, so if people thinking that are watching this, please enlighten me. The story, in general it's very clear that the author of the manga that he is not afraid like he's just not afraid to do things and kill people and like do all these crazy things there are some very attractive characters and they keep my attention they keep my attention but i think it actually seems like a lot of the attractive characters i think have died or are dying so that's a bummer but uh, i think it was good to i don't know what's gonna happen later on I think it's good to because the characters in the kind of main group because they're so young it seems like the older 
sorcerers are dying to kind of give the young people a shot so that they can like prove themselves. I think that's good. Generally in stories, a lot of the time you do want, I mean depending, like if you think of Harry Potter and um, even like the Lord of the Rings, the mentor figure, you want them out of the story to die, whatever, to kind of motivate the younger one, the person being protected to give them their own moment to shine. At the moment, it was a lot of the adult sorcerers and the really powerful sorcerers kind of showing off. Um, but the younger people, you know, they're getting their time, their moment. Okay, so the next is Spy Family. I don't know where I saw this. I might have been on Instagram or something, but I saw somebody complaining about people who say they watch anime and it's people who will talk about Spy Family and things like that. I. I think it is so weird <laughs> to I've, I've when music movies books I think it's so weird to tell people that they're not a real fan of something or that they need to go like watch listen to the obscure thing to be legitimate I think that is so why can't people just like the things that they like I there's so many things to watch read I take I have to take my time okay I can't do everything all at once so I hear about the, you know, really popular things, I watch it, I read it, I listen to it, and then let me dig deeper, you know what I mean? Rant over. Spy Family is, it is a story that follows a spy who has to build a family to execute a mission not realizing that the girl he adopts as his daughter is a telepath, and the woman he agrees to be in a marriage with is a skilled assassin. So essentially all three characters in this fake family, they have these secrets from each other. And <clears throat> it's, an <coughs> it's another story that's really wholesome, but there are, you know, uh, Twilight Lloyd, child and a victim of war. He very clearly has PTSD. Um, Yor has her issues. <laughs> And Anya is an orphan who very clearly has abandonment issues because every time something happens, she's like, they're going to give me back. They're a fake family, but it's very clear that they do care about each other, but there's not, they're not there yet in the I love you stage yet. We're a family stage. I don't know when that'll ever happen. I don't know how long the manga and the anime are going to go for, but I do hope that it ends with them being a real family. It's, I... We were in a different apartment. We moved to an apartment that was roach infested and we moved again. And when we were in the roach infested apartment, I was watching a lot of different things to calm my anxiety. Lord of the Rings, that's my go-to. But also I was watching Spy Family, I had heard about it. It was another one that I had a really weird first impression of that was completely different to what it was when I started watching. And it made me happy. And I love Anya so much. I'm not a really, I'm not a kid person. And I know she's a fake child, but she acts so much like a kid. All the kids in this anime, they act like real children. You know, like in a lot of different, in a lot of media, uh, children don't really act like children, but the kids in this act like kids. And Anya's really adorable. She's uh, the kind of, she's a really big part of the series because of her telepathy and her power and how she uses it to help people to sort of manipulate things but often to help people. I really like Yor as a character also. I like Lloyd too. I, I love a lot of these characters. Even um, Yuri. I know some people don't like him. I like him. I find him funny but um, I like I like all these characters but Yor I think she's a good character because she is sort of the um because she's an assassin and when she's an assassin she looks like this i'll put it up somewhere kind of looks like this vixen sort of character but she's really not she's very nice but she has this horrible job where in this new season she's kind of questioning why she does it she started for money i think for because her parents had died so she was taking care of her brother i think she's a really well written female character that is more than just boobs and like a hot sexy assassin outfit. She's got a lot of depth to her character that I appreciate thus far. The anime has become one of my favorites 
quite honestly. There is some action and you know there's comedy, there's not really romance yet. Okay, uh, Dr. Stone, we start with them as our characters. Uh, a green light washes over Tokyo and then subsequently all over the world, uh, putting everybody in these like, freezing everybody in stone. And then was it several millennia later, after several millennia, um, Taiju wakes up and then Senku also wakes up and then they start uh, trying to rebuild civilization essentially. And it is, I don't know how accurate the science is on this show. I'm not a science girly. I'm not a STEM girly. I am humanities, arts, you know, but the, I do love science. I love people who are really good at it and people who are really interested in it. I really like, I think Senku as a character is great because he's intelligent, but not condescending. He's a good example of somebody who is genuinely, uh, smart person because a smart person does not want to gatekeep intelligence um, or condescend to people or make people feel bad. A really intelligent person wants to spread intelligence. Why wouldn't you want other people to have the knowledge that you have? This is several millennia later. There were people in space at the time that the whole world was encased in stone and so when they come back they there's a they create a village and their descendants are in this village and so when Senku starts to interact with them they don't know certain things but he's not like he's helping them they build like the kingdom of science and stuff he ends up becoming the chief <laughs> of this village and it's just great I somebody there was this perfect comment it's really just like them being humans. It's kind of like a, the anime is kind of a celebration of humanity and what human beings are capable of and humanity's greatest inventions and what people are capable of when they come together. Um, now moving on to the live action stuff. Okay, wait, so before we get done talking about anime, I would like to talk about Romantic Killer. I completely forgot about this, which is crazy because I loved it so much. Um, it is about Anzu, and she is a high school girl. She is single. She loves her cat, video games, and chocolate. And a wizard randomly shows up into in her life. And Japan, you know, their birth rate is going down. And the wizard's like, we need to get you somebody. So it tries to manufacture and force her into these relationships that ultimately go nowhere. But the show is so brilliant because it focuses on, like she does make connections with these people, these guys, but it's genuine friendship. And there's a possibility that there could be something with some, with a certain character, but that's not the point. Like romance is not, the point funny and um but like the more the show goes on the more you watch there's so much heart to it and i like that it's not a show about romance like it starts off like that but it's so much more than that it's beautiful and i really liked how the main character is just herself she's a phenomenal she's a great protagonist i don't know she's just strong and knows who she is and doesn't compromise. I highly recommend that one. Uh, I talked about Love is Blind in one... No, I talked about Love is Blind season four and then they came out with Love, Love is Blind season five really, really quickly. It was so boring. I did not finish watching it. I'm not even gonna talk about it. Um, the Great British Bake Off. There's a new season. I love The Great British Bake Off. And then finally, we're at the end. My throat, you can hear it. Uh, Flea Bag. I finally watched it. I missed my Flea Bag era. And I probably will never have a flea bag era, but it was a good show. The first season, um, the second season was better than the first season. <clears throat> flea bag is basically, um, it's about a young woman in London. Her name is not really flea bag, but that's what she's called in the show. A lot of the characters don't have real names. Um, like her dad is dad, I believe, but she is, Wikipedia calls her free spirited, but she's kind of a mess. <laughs> and it's just about, yeah, her life, what she has been through, um, her family, like her relationships with her family, 
and her relationship with herself and like uh, men and things like that. So yeah, the first season is a little bleak. Like there are some moments where it was like a little kind of like too sad. The second one, the second season, it introduces the hot priest and oh my god. <laughs> Uh, it was great. It was really great. First season I was kind of like, this is the show that people are making a big deal about? Like, I mean, it was fine. But second season, it's really, it's really good. It's a really good show. It ended really great. Uh, I think what I, my mom watches a lot of British TV shows and I think what I've learned from TV over there is that they tend to not go on too long. They tend to end at the right moment. Meanwhile, like Grey's Anatomy, what is it still on? I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about. I didn't think I could. I thought it would take me hours to do this, but it's not that bad. And I mostly spent a lot of time trying to explain Bleach to like the world of Bleach and I probably didn't need to do that. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I have obviously perfect, amazing, great taste in everything, so you should definitely watch everything that I watch and you will definitely like it. Kidding. No. I just, I like what I like and you can, this is not necessarily a recommendation, I just like talking about things that I like. I mean, I do recommend them. I do recommend them, but you know, if you don't like it, that's not my problem. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <clears throat> Um, I think that would probably, I think that's probably it for the things that I've read and watched. Um, yeah, thank you, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>